We continue our crash course in gems today with a real powerhouse. You guys have been clamoring for us to cover this overall wear and builder. As always, we'll run through their story, powers, and real world gemology. What's up guys, I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about bismuth from Steven Universe. Before we dive in, I want to thank all of our sponsors on Patreon. Thanks to you heroes, we get to keep on keeping on. If you want to help, check out the page and see if a donation tier works for you. In return, we'll give you shout outs, swag, and more. If you're looking to just shop, go no further than our affiliate link with TeePublic. They've got all the Steven Universe swag you could want and more. Let's give a quick rundown of Bismuth and her backstory. According to series creator Rebecca Sugar, her design was influenced by the Gorons from The Legend of Zelda, as well as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which makes no sense to me. I don't see any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in her design. She's got a shell. She doesn't have a shell. She's got a backless outfit. Is it because she's muscular and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are muscular? Does she eat a lot of pizza? No! Rebecca Sugar, explain yourself! Was she raised by a rat? She was raised by a rat, that's the one. So let's pick up where we left off. Back on Homeworld, Bismuth was a builder, and it's heavily implied that she'd been aiding in the construction of gem colonies for hundreds upon hundreds of years. Bismuth deeply resents the Homeworld elites for essentially enslaving her, forcing her to do their bidding. This manifests as a blinding hatred towards Homeworld. Upon meeting Rose Quartz, Bismuth joined the rebellion and became a member of the Crystal Gems. Rose encouraged Bismuth to pursue a life and job that she wanted. And so, Bismuth decided that what she wanted to do was make weapons. In the Forge, Bismuth created the arsenal of weapons we've seen the Crystal Gems wield throughout the series. Should go without saying, but if Bismuth created all the gem's weaponry, you bet she made Rose's sword. Rose specifically requested a sword that could tear through a gem's physical form without shattering them. And Bismuth delivered. Bismuth was incredibly devoted to the Rebellion, and her zealous attitude did lead to a lot of questionable decisions. We learn later that it was in fact Bismuth who poofed Lapis Lazuli after mistaking her for a homeworld soldier. Bismuth also created a dangerous weapon known as the Breaking Point. This weapon's sole intent was shattering a gem, specifically shattering the diamonds. Rose did not support this weapon and disagreed vehemently with Bismuth's intentions. Enraged, Bismuth questioned her leader and wondered why she would place more value on the lives of the diamonds than ending the war. Righteous in her belief that this was the only way to solve the gem conflict, Bismuth ended up attacking Rose Quartz. This led to Rose poofing and bubbling Bismuth. Rose would end up lying to her companions, saying that Bismuth was lost at the Battle of the Ziggurat. Shattered. Shatter me? Psst. Homeworld couldn't lay a scratch on this gem. Some 5,000 plus years after her altercation with Rose, Bismuth is freed from her bubble by Steven after he breaks a tree branch in Lion's hammer space dimension and falls on it. Once she regenerates, Steven takes Bismuth to be reunited with Garnet and Pearl. While bubbled, Bismuth had no concept of time and was filled in on how the war ended. The gems took her to Strawberry Battlefield to explain how long she was out and that she, Pearl and Garnet are the only known survivors of the rebellion. Bismuth tries to bestow the breaking point upon Steven, just like she did Rose Quartz. Like mother like son, Steven also rejects the weapon, causing Bismuth to lose it again. She thinks Steven is just Rose in disguise. But it's not right. That's exactly what she said. Huh? That's exactly what you said. Reluctantly, Steven strikes her gem with his mother's sword. Before Bismuth poofs, she reveals how hurt and betrayed she felt over Rose's lie about what happened to her. Steven promises that he'll be open and honest with the other gems about what happened, leading Bismuth to view Steven as his own person, and as a better person. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them everything. <laughs> then you really are better than her. Ultimately, Bismuth will be restored and regenerate in the episode Made of Honor as she joins the Crystal Gems once more. Bismuth, despite her outbursts and vindictive attitude that we see early on, does know when she's done something wrong. We see her efforts to restore good faith with the rest of the Crystal Gems in Made of Honor. And while well, she may need to learn about the gray area between good and evil, she seems to adapt and become less bloodthirsty. Can you imagine? Hey, Rose! Check out this cool weapon I made. I'm gonna shatter you with it. <laughs> she possesses wonderful leadership abilities, as we see in the Steven Universe movie, when she's able to rally the gems to battle and help inspire Steven in getting the gems' memories back. She also genuinely loves her friends and expresses her enthusiasm physically with bone-crushing bear hugs. As I've mentioned, Bismuth is the weapons creator of the Crystal Gems. Much like Vulcan in Roman mythology, crafting pieces for the other fighters. 
She made herself full plate body armor that can shoot spikes out of the shoulders whenever she flexes. She wears the armor to Ruby and Sapphire's wedding since she believes this is the nicest thing that she owns. You gotta love someone who's proud of their own craftsmanship. She's like the Ron Swanson of gems. I think it'll be interesting to see what sort of role Bismuth plays in the next installment of Steven Universe. We see in Steven Universe the movie that Bismuth has become instrumental in building Little Homeworld, serving as an architect of sorts for this new town for refugees. My scaffolding! My pet is scaffolding! What's fascinating to me is that Bismuth essentially is reverting to her first job, colony construction. This, to me, shows her growth and understanding of how she and other gems can coexist with Homeworld's gems. So I think it's very, very interesting that she's going back to that initial profession that she was assigned, essentially. And while before it was something that she didn't like because she was helping colonization and was being forced to do it, she's now utilizing her skills in a positive way. And she's probably the gem who's most well assimilated to Earth, especially given her time off planet being bubbled. She really, really dives into Earth's culture and uses, you know, colloquialisms and seems to understand how Earth works better than even some of the gems that have been around, like Pearl and Garnet. We took a huge blow from Homeworld, but now we're back in Bismuth. <laughs> She's got jokes. And I think it's gonna be fascinating to see her actually build this kind of new world for them to exist in with how staunch her belief system is and how Homeworld was totalitarian and hard to live in and elitist and classist. I think it'll be fun to see her design a an area that it's void of that caste system since she's so rigorously against it. Homeworld used us business to erect spires and temples for the gem elites to enjoy. Her gem resides square in her chest and is the only concave or any gemstone we've seen thus far. In addition to her weapon forging ability, like all gems, Bismuth is incredibly strong, durable, and can regenerate. Oh, that's nice. Steven, come here and join me. The lava's great. I would, but I'm not lava proof. <laughs> Let's talk about real world Bismuth, which isn't even a gem. It's an element. It's 83 on the periodic table, and its symbol is by. There's something there. Y'all just go have at it. It's the most metallic and the least abundant of the nitrogen family. The metallic aspects of this element really fit our gem. Not only does she work with it in the forge, her music and motifs are all metal. This is a purposeful play on the element. I feel like the metallic, the metallic nature of Bismuth is what kind of led them to making her a Vulcan forging character. You know, she's the only elemental one that we've seen, and she and Pearl are the only gems that aren't gems. But I think Bismuth being an actual physical element on the periodic table was a very, very calculated, decided choice for somebody who makes all of their weaponry. But Rose taught me that my life was my own, that I could choose to do whatever I wanted. Bismuth is a brittle, crystalline metal that is really gosh dang pretty. It has a variety of uses, including cosmetics, alloys, ammunition, fire extinguishers, and is best known for being the main ingredient in Pepto-Bismol. So all those times I gave you the pseudoscience of what a gem can do, I actually have one with actual medicinal qualities. Boom time. Also, why in Poo Perfect Heaven is the same thing that's in ammo, an active ingredient in tummy relief? What the hell, man? This really makes me never want to consume Pepto-Bismol ever again, by the way. I don't want to put gun, gun juice in my tummy. Not the fact that it's like bright pink. Yeah, that part's fine. I like pink things. But the rocks. But the rocks! I don't want the metal in my tummy! They're minerals, Marie! Apparently, since ancient times, this element has been mistaken for lead and tin, and, thanks to its similar properties, has often been used in their place. According to the Los Alamos National Laboratory, bismuth is a post-transition metal, meaning that it isn't a great conductor and has a low melting point. Compared to other metals, it's the most diamagnetic, meaning that it resists being magnetized and repels magnetic fields. Her metallic element seems to fit her in how staunch and sure she is in her beliefs. She can't be manipulated. She isn't pliable. She's rigid. She's coarse. I think bismuth having that low melting point and not being something that um, can be really manipulated without like deriving it and refining it from things and really, really working with it is one of the reasons why she's such a stagnant character in the beginning. She is so righteous in her beliefs that the Diamond Authority is evil, and I mean evil. There is no gray area here. 
She would not have understood Rose Quartz being Pink Diamond. She was staunch in her belief system of there is evil in the world and I must eradicate it. And I think the metal not being easily manipulated is something that could have factored into that design in her character. Homeworld treats us like dirt because we don't shine like the elite. But the crystal gems are back and we'll give those diamonds another taste of what's coming. Alloys of bismuth are used to make castings of objects. I found this really interesting given the forging process bismuth the character takes part in. Let me know if you think the elemental facts factored into the character. Be made of honor? Well, I am. I'm made of the most solid, flexible, dimagnetic stuff there is, and I'm not as dense as you might think. There's a ton to know about bismuth. What did I miss? What do you think we'll see from her in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again to everyone on Patreon, TeePublic, and those of you who just stopped by and tuned in. For more videos, click to the left, and thanks for watching. I'll see you, Space Cowboy.